This video is to help you identify the different models of Alice Chalmer plow frames. Um, before I get started though, I'd like to point out that Alice made many different styles of mold boards and they're all interchangeable on all the different model plows. So you cannot identify a particular plow frame based on the mold boards themselves. And here to help with the plow identification is Ted Bisker. He's going to start off with the old pulse type plows. Go ahead and take it away, Ted. Okay, today we're going to talk about the older Alice plows and how to distinguish, distinguish between models, between the number one, number four, the number two, and uh, differences in the number two plows. Uh, this is a model, this is a number one. It can be distinguished by single beam. They also came in two bottoms, but those are extremely rare. They also had a small clutch and a small hub. And that's one of the way, best way to distinguish a number, a, uh, number one Alice plow. Chalmers number four lightweight plow and this was in the inventory all the way up to 1960. Um, the beams are just a little narrower again it runs the small clutch that's similar to the clutch on the number one plow and uh, the straps the slotted straps is another distinguishing characteristic of a number four lightweight plow. Something else we should probably point out is most of the Alice plows use this special clevis bolted directly to the drawbar. It's a D-shaped clevis. Goes right in the slot here and latches. And to disconnect you just push the bot top button. So that's another distinguishing characteristics of a lot of Alice plows. This type of clevis can also be used with other types of plows. Okay, this is an Alice Chalmers number two plow. That's the most common plow Alice made back in the day. Uh, they made them all the way from two bottoms to five bottoms. This is a two bottom. Um, uses the same type of hitch with a D clevis again. It's heavier. Um, the beams are heavier than on number four. And it has different variations on the back. You can get a long landslide or you can get what's called a rolling landslide which this plow has. This is a pretty nice plow in that the uh, Alice Chalmers stencil on the top of the beams and the number 2, 214 are both very legible yet. It's got a larger clutch, larger axles, and uh, larger hubs. See the large hubs on the outside. Uh, that's a number 2 Alice plow. The next plow in line is also a number two, but it's on steel wheels, and it has the articulated rear wheel. That's the difference from the 214 to the 216 here. Uh, I also have a 218, which is a very rare plow. But it's, again, this is a number two plow with the large hubs and the large clutch. Uh, uh, landslide.
This is Alice Chalmers' first mounted plow that came out with the model WD. It's called a pickup plow. Uh, most of us refer to it as the round beam plow because it has beams similar to the number two plow. It's got a unique hitch on it. You actually use the drawbar to pull the plow. Uh, you set your drawbar as short as possible and you take the pins out of the support so it can pivot up and down. You had to take the power takeoff shaft off. Uh, this was kind of unique. When you back into the plow, you actually hook this into the drawbar and then put it in the slot to hold the drawbar up while you hitch the tractor up. You'd, you'd back into it. Back into it like this and then drop the pin in. And then this would go over top of the drawbar and a spring was down and lock in place. And uh, that's how you pull the plow. Actually, you actually pulled it with the drawbar of the tractor. Now, if you had stony ground, you replaced this clevis with this spring. And uh, that would absorb some of the shock if you should happen to hit rocks. Uh, the Alice pickup plow is also convertible. You can use it as a 14 or a 16. Right now this one is set up on 16 inches. The beam is on the outside of the pull plate. If you move the beam to the inside it becomes a 214. You also have to move it up there and make other adjustments on it, but the book tells you how to do that. Thanks, Ted. Here is a number 50 series plow. It was first introduced in 1950 and it was designated the CA and WD plow. Shortly thereafter, they redesignated it the 50 series. In the 50 series, they offered 10 inch, 12 inch, 14, and 16 inch mold boards. And you could get the plow in either a pin hitch or after 1953, it was available in snap coupler. And if you had a pin hitch plow, you can also convert it from pin hitch to snap coupler. The 50 series is easy to identify by the stub beam coming off the main frame at a 90 degree angle. It's the only Alice plow that had the sub beam coming straight off the plow frame. The 50 series came in three different models, a 52, a 53, and a 54. The two, three, and four represent how many bottoms were on each plow. So a 52, would have two bottoms, a 53 would have three bottoms, and a 54 would have four bottoms. Here is the model 54 plow. Um, it's often referred to as a two-way plow or a spinner plow um, because you'd only have two plows down or two bottoms in the ground at, each, at any given time. This was good for using on contours or in places where you uh, only wanted to have one dead furrow at the end of the field. It has two right hand bottoms and two left hand bottoms. And what we what you do when you got to the end of the field, you pull this lever back to unlock it and just give the bottom a little push and 
the two bottoms would rotate, or I should say the four bombs would rotate around 90 degrees or 180 degrees, and you can go right back in the same furrow um, that you just got done with. That way you're always throwing the dirt to one direction. This was also available in a pin hitch um, for the older style uh, or older tractors. And around 70, I'm sorry, 1953 to 1954-ish, when the snap coupler came out, you could convert it to a snap coupler. This is kind of a hybrid because it has a snap coupler eye on it, but it still has the old pin type uh, lift arm latches. This is a number 62 plow. The 60 series plows came out about uh, 1955 with the 2, 3, and the 4 bottom to match the WD-45. And later in 1957, they came out with the 5 bottom for the D-17. The biggest distinguishing feature of the 60 over the versus the uh, 50 series is that the stub beams here are taller but they also come down at a, at a forward angle to uh, help with uh, trash and residue so the plow wouldn't get plugged up. And Alice uh, offered a 10, 12, 14 and 16 inch bottoms for these plows and you can get the plow in snap coupler three point um, fully mounted or uh, semi-mounted. Here we have a 70 series plow. They started production in these in the late 50s and uh, they were available from a two bottom plow up to a five bottom plow in 14 or 16 inch bottoms. The hitches uh, that you can get were a snap coupler, three point, and a trailer or pole type plow. Uh, the differences between the 70 over the 60 was the stub beam was taller than the 60, kind of still went down forward at the same angle for trash uh, clearance. Also, the frame is adjustable from 14 to 16 inch by loosening up and replacing the bolts in different holes. So the plow actually stands up taller and the bottoms are actually moved back away from each other to provide more trash clearance. So um, you notice that the plow is actually longer than a 60 series and taller. Here we have a 80 series plow which came out in 1960. It was available in 14 and 16 inch bottoms as well as uh, for the hitching it's the same as the 70 series. It was available in snap coupler three point um, and the trailer or pull type plows. The biggest difference and basically the only difference between the 70 series and the 80 series is Alice added spring trip bottoms. Um, it's still the same height, it still has the same angled uh, stub beam going forward on the mold board, but with the spring trip if you hit a rock or stump some hard obstacle in the ground the spring trip would uh, release and the plow bottom would swing backwards so that you wouldn't damage the bottoms. And to reset them all you had to do is basically leave the plow down and back up and it would reset itself. Here we have a three bottom disc plow. Uh, the disc plows are actually made by Athens Company and for Alice and you can get them in a I believe a two, three, four and a five bottom. You can get them in a pin hitch a snap coupler and also a three point. 
um, and also uh, I believe a semi-mounted. They have three or they have 26 inch uh, disc holders and you cannot adjust the depth of cut on these at all. They cut between 11 to 12 inches deep um, and approximately uh, I believe 10 inches uh, wide. One of the biggest things to note people get uh, disc plows and disc tillers mixed up is a disc plow has a separate axle per bottom or per Kohler and a disc tiller actually has one solid shaft that runs through all of the Kohlers and a disc tiller don't cut as deep but it does cut wider. Here is a model 9000 plow. This plow showed a total design change by Alice Chalmers. All the previous plows in this video that you've seen, the horsepower requirement per bottom was between 8 to 10 horsepower. With the introduction of the 9000 series, that horsepower changed from 15 to 20 horsepower per moldboard. This plow was produced from 1963 through 1970, and you could get a 14 inch or 16 inch moldboards. And it was offered in a three point semi mounted like this particular model, and also a pole type or trailer version. Here we have a monoframe plow, model 2000. It replaced the model 9000 in 1970. The bottoms uh, that were available were a 16 inch and an 18 inch. And you can get the plow with uh, three bottoms up to seven bottoms. They only made this plow in a three point semi mounted plow and it was what they call a in furrow plow, which means that the right uh, tractor tires were in the furrow. Next we have the 3000 series plow, which was the same as a 2000 series, but it was a on land plow, which means that all your tractor tires were up on level ground. There is no tractor tires running in the furrow. It was available with 16 and 18 inch bottoms. It was available in a semi mounted three point hitch or in a trailer type, pull type hitch. The plow is also available with six, seven, or eight bottoms. The 2500 series was very similar to the 3000 series. It was only available with a semi mounted hitch and only was offered with 18 inch bottoms. The in furrow plow was offered between five to seven bottoms and the on land plow was offered from seven to eight bottoms. Well I hope you found this video informative and helpful and I thank you for watching and until next time keep plowing.